So in this version of, of uh, Cars and Coffee, um, and feel free to unmute yourself if you want to say, say something as we're going along. Um, we're going to primarily focus on uh, the upper body. So we're going to get neck, scapula, uh, the shoulder joint itself, uh, just depending on time. Because I do want to keep these relatively short because we're going to look at quite a few different variations. Maybe we'll get in a little bit of spine stuff to end with. So just, just a reminder about why we do CARS, which stands for Controlled Articular Rotations. So we're looking to take an individual joint through its active um, available range of motion with a rotational component. So we really want to tr isolate movement just to the joint that we're working on because CARS can serve as a bit of a self-assessment tool. You're like, oh, well, I thought I was moving my shoulder, but I'm actually moving my spine. And, and it can also, the kind of outcome or what you learn from your car's routine can point you in the direction of some you know, ranges of motion that may be limited. Of course, if there's pain, that's definitely a red flag. And just what, what the neck is a good example to talk about uh, closing angle pain, because when we're doing our cars, we don't want to be turning into any painful areas. We really want the cars to be pain free. So for example, with the neck, so what the closing angle would be, say I'm taking a lateral bend, a side bend here. So this would be the closing angle and this would be the open angle. So any joint that we're taking through, uh, you know, the rotational movement, the cars, there should be, you know, ideally you might feel a nice stretch on the open angle, it might be a little bit painful, but it shouldn't, should it be, it should be a stretching sensation. If you're feeling any pinching or pain on any closing angle, you should definitely back off because it doesn't make, whether it's the neck or any other area of the body, because it doesn't make sense to keep kind of jamming and, and turning into that area of pain. All right, so let's actually start with the neck. I'm just going to scoot back a little bit. You can, so again, there's lots of different base positions. I'm going to stay relatively low to the ground just so I stay in view of the camera. You can certainly come up into a tall standing position. But another thing I find with, um, you know, as we're trying to isolate the movement just to the neck, a lot of, uh, of uh, students tend to couple movements in the shoulder blades or the spine with the neck car. So if we were side bending, they might tend to elevate that shoulder blade or rotating, they'll kind of turn the whole body. So one thing that can be helpful for some students, especially if they have the coupling of the shoulder blades, is to actually hold some weights in your hand. It's not going to be, not heavy weights, but just something to, to get that depression sensation in your shoulder blades so they are not going to move around uh, while you're working on the neck. So if you tend to be one of those people that kind of is always crunching up here, holding some light weights in your hands can be very useful during the neck cars. Okay, but for now, if you're, you can be kneeling, standing, a tall kneel, seated down, or even on a chair, just going to let your hands be heavy. So pull your shoulder blades away from your ears. We're just going to go into neck flexion and extension to start. So from an upright neck, slowly start to bring your chin in towards your chest. And think of lengthening kind of through the back of the neck as you pull into neck flexion. And again, there should be a nice stretch along the back side of your neck, maybe even into the upper back and the, the you know, kind of uh, shoulder blade area. And then let's very slowly start to kind of almost like, like you're giving yourself a double or triple chin Start to lengthen back up, keeping the chin somewhat tucked in. Okay, and let's slowly extend back. So think of extending first kind of from the base of the neck, stretching up as you lean back again. If there's any pinching on the back of the neck, stop short of that. Again, ideally the stretch, the open angle here will be through the throat area. Don't let your head fall off. Now let's slowly straighten back up. Let's just get one more flexion and extension, then we'll do the full global cars. So slowly, think of again, lengthening through the back of your neck as you bring your chin in towards your chest, giving yourself a double, triple, quadruple chin. Squeeze in, make sure you're not rounding the rest of your spine. Keep it strict to just the neck. And let's keep the neck or the chin kind of tucked in as you straighten back up. Obviously, it makes my voice sound funny. And one more time, lifting up, lengthening the back of the neck even as you extend. And come all the way up, bring your head back on straight. Okay, so create some tension in your arms through the rest of your body and go through the full global neck car. So it's going to start with flexion like we just did. Slowly bring your chin in towards your chest. 
From here, think of dragging your chin along your right collarbone. Keep your torso forward. Don't let the right shoulder blade lift up. We're going to rotate to the rotate to the right. Max out that rotation. Should be a stretch again along the opposite side, the left side. From here, side bend to the right. So you start to take your right ear and kind of bat a little bit back behind the right shoulder. Make sure you're not leaning the rest of your body. Again, it should be a nice stretch along the left side of the neck. We're going to slowly make our way into extension and move slow. Side bend to the left, so drop the left ear back. Again, pause, should be a stretch along the right side of the neck. Now rotate to the left, so take a look over your left shoulder. And we're going to come back into flexion, so you start to flex in, you dragging your chin along your left collarbone, come back to the middle. I'm going to go one more time in that direction. So keep tuck, the chin tucked in over the right collarbone. Rotate, look over your right shoulder. Side bend right, and keep some tension in the arms, the rest of your body, so nothing else is moving. Slowly extend. Okay, so we go super slow so that you're always in control and that you can really see if you're at the outer limits. Side bend left, because we go too fast, and it doesn't give that good feedback as well to your nervous system. Rotate left. Flex back in, chin above the left collarbone. Okay, and once you're in neck flexion, chin in towards the center of your chest, let's reverse. Okay, start to drag your chin over your left collarbone, rotating, looking over the left shoulder. Try not to make, let the left shoulder blade hike up. Side bend left, take the left ear back. Slowly extend. Side bend right. Rotate right, see what's going on over on the right side of the room, and flex back through, chin above the right collarbone. Let's get one more rep this way. Try to keep the cadence or the rhythm even on these. We're rotating left, side bending left, and just watching out for any points of pinching, closing angle pain, side bending right. Rotate right and come on back through the middle. Once you're in neck flexion, let's slowly straighten back up. All right, good. Neck is done for now. I'm going to get the shoulder blade. So we're going to do one, uh, one scapula, one shoulder blade at a time, and we're going to do it in a half kneeling position. So if we're going to get the right shoulder blade, I'm going to step my left foot forward. Okay, and then you can pad the knee. I mean, if this doesn't work for you, then feel free to, you know, take another base position. So with the shoulder blade, often what happens is the arm kind of moves all around with the shoulder blade. So one way to stop yourself from doing that, not that I expect you to have a tennis ball handy, but if you have a tennis ball or some small ball available, I'll show you what you can do in the future. So if you hold that, ten you press the tennis ball against your leg, I have my palm open, that's really going to restrict my ability to kind of let my elbow bend and my arm move around. Plus it keeps the arm quite tight into the body. So often with the scapula cars, the arm is kind of moving all around. So it's something to consider, but if you don't have a ball, I don't expect you to have one readily available. Just want you to notice what your hand is doing and imagine there's a tennis ball there and you're just massaging your outer thigh with that tennis ball. Okay, so I'll show from the side here. Okay, so left foot forward, you can take the left leg a bit off to the side if that's a bit more stable, and press, so palm open. If you have a ball, you're gonna create some tension there, pressing the ball into the thigh. If you don't have the ball, just imagine it. Let's elevate the scapula up. Okay, so lift the shoulder blade up towards your ears, and we're gonna protract forward. Okay, so it's just the scapula moving forward. The arm is staying pretty much in that same position alongside the body. Now depress, reach your hand down towards the floor. Squeeze back, retract. Okay, small circles here, lift up. Keep that elbow locked out, protract, pull the shoulder blade forward, spread it on your back. Slide it down, don't lose your tennis ball if you have one. Retract back, squeeze. Keep retracting as you lift up. Okay, let's go one more time this direction. Protract, so hard if you have a tennis ball. Depress, pull the shoulder blade down. Squeeze back, stay still in the rest of your body. Up, 
Okay, and let's freeze here in scapular elevation, then we're gonna reverse. So now from here, don't bend your elbow, retract. Squeeze your shoulder blade back, slowly glide it down. Protract, roll forward, up. So hard to keep the elbow straight, squeeze back. Pull down, protract. One more time, up, retract back. Pull down, roll forward, and up. Okay, let's get the left shoulder blade. So anyway, just a different way to, um, to monitor what the arm is doing. Like I said, have the ball there or an imaginary ball. Okay, so right foot forward. Let's see how I do in here if I drop the tennis ball. Okay, so if you have the ball, you're pressing the, <laughs> the palm, palm of your hand into that tennis ball, and let's elevate. So lift up. From here, protract, so spread the shoulder blade on your back, pull it down, make sure the rest of your body isn't wiggling. Squeeze back, retract, lift up with retractions. Once we're up, and again, we're gonna roll forward, pull the shoulder blade down, squeeze it back, lift up, forward, almost losing my tennis ball, pull down, squeeze back, and lift up, freeze here in scapula elevation, and let's reverse. So from here, from lifted, retract back, hold down. When you're down, roll forward, elevate up, squeeze up, squeeze up, pull back, glide down, roll forward, one more rep. Up, squeeze back, pull down, forward, and up. Okay, we're done with scapula for now. So let's talk about, let's, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on the shoulder joint. So the, the shoulder uh, cars can be quite complicated because the shoulder joint is obviously very mobile, so you've got rotation plus all this huge potential range of motion there. So we're gonna start actually looking just at rotation. So axial rotations or capsule cars. Let's start with the right shoulder. So maybe take any comfortable position here. And we're gonna just take the right arm out to the side and create a fist here. Again, I like to hold a tennis ball or you could you know, hold a pair, of, like a pair of socks, something you can squish, uh, squish in your hand, ideally not dirty socks, right? Something to create a little bit of tension in that arm. If you don't have anything to grab, then just make a fist. Okay, now pack that right shoulder blade down your back. I'm just gonna rotate here. So rotating the humerus, the arm bone within the shoulder socket. And it's very common for people to couple that with scapula movement or even spine movement. So this here, I'm not strictly limited to the shoulder joint. I'm moving my spine, I'm moving my shoulder blade. So pack that shoulder blade down, have a look at your right bicep. Internally rotate the shoulder. So if you're looking at your bicep, it should start to turn forward and down towards the ground. And when you're doing these, really think about kind of wringing out as much rotation. You know, like you wring out a dish rag or something, trying to squeeze out as much internal rotation as you can. And let's externally rotate. So bicep's gonna turn up, maybe even turn back. Okay, and just do a few of those. Another thing to note is, of course, the elbow, the forearm can root and the wrist can rotate without the shoulder or joint itself actually rotating. So you gotta be careful here that you're not just rotating at the wrist and forearm that really the shoulder joint is driving the movement and the lower, the lower part of the arm is just along for the ride. Okay, let's get one more time, internally rotate. Don't let the shoulder blade lift up. And externally rotate. Okay, so that's having the shoulder out in abduction, which is part of our global shoulder car. Let's do a different position. Let's go more overhead. You don't have to be in super tight shoulder flexion and try not to let the shoulder blade lift up. There'll be some upward rotation of it, but still, you don't want the shoulder blade being up here. Okay, it's so the same idea. Grip your ball or your socks or whatever you have in your hand, and just take a look at that right arm. As you internally rotate, it's the bicep turning. Externally rotate. Might not be as much in this position as it was when it was more parallel to the ground. Let's do a couple more. Internally rotate. Try to wring out as much rotation. Don't worry so much about rotating the forearm or the wrist. Make it happen here at the shoulder joint. Okay, whatever you've got, you got. Because cars, again, it tells you what your range of motion is, where it's potentially uh, lacking or limited. Okay, turn in, 
One more time, externally rotate. Okay, so let's take the shoulder in one more spot here, shoulder extension. Okay, so arm more behind the body. Same idea, shoulder blade stays still, internally rotate, and externally rotate. When you come to each end point of your rotation, kind of like fight for a little bit more. That's that whole kind of wringing the towel out, which is your arm. Okay, one more time, internally rotate, and externally rotate. Okay, so now we're gonna take the shoulder, that right shoulder, through the full global cars. And again, I'm gonna come into a half kneeling position where I was for my scapula cars. You can uh, you know, stay seated or stand up. So it starts in external rotation. So I'm gonna externally rotate my arm, the eye of the elbow forward, the palm forward, and I'm gonna keep my tennis ball for this. Create some tension here, press your left hand into your left leg, and we're gonna sweep across the body. So we've got maintaining external rotation here in the shoulder. Okay, come on up into shoulder flexion back here. Okay, and at this point, you want to make sure that the elbow is straight. If you have difficulty keeping your elbow straight, try either having the arm slightly more forward or a bit out to the side. Okay, so once we're here in flexion, well, then we're, here comes our axial rotation. We're going to internally rotate. The bicep spins forward. Okay, reach back. Don't let your chest turn. Try to keep rotating almost continuously as you take the arm back and down. I'm still trying to squeeze out as much internal rotation as I can. We're going to end up with the right hand alongside the right hip. And let's reverse. Okay, so your palm should be facing back at this point. Come into shoulder extension. Okay, here's our next axial rotation. Start to externally rotate. You're continuing to externally rotate, keep that shoulder blade low. Come on up into shoulder flexion. Still have external rotation. I'm gonna cut across the body and down, okay? Let's do a couple more. I'm just gonna switch from the side here. Okay, so we're gonna sweep across, act with external rotation. Come on up into shoulder flexion. Your shoulder flexion might be here and then you might know, oh, then I try to use my uh, spine to, extend, uh, to flex my shoulder. Okay, so you can start rotating from here. If you can come up further, that's fine. Now we're going to internally rotate. Okay, slowly reach back. Try to keep spinning the upper arm. Try to keep rotating. Okay, and reverse from here. Shoulder extension. Externally rotate. Coming all the way up. Slowly lower down. Let's get one more on this right shoulder. Okay, sweep across. Flexion. Internally rotate again. Note what you're spinning from. Turn from the upper arm. Come on down. And back part of the car. Externally rotate. Come on up and lower down. Now, we don't have to always do like the global car. So for example, I have a lot of students who struggle with this transition from shoulder flexion, internal rotation, and back. And if that's you, you can just practice that part of the shoulder car. If it feels sticky, I know that's not a technical term, sticky, or it just isn't, you feel like you don't have much control or awareness there, you can always take the full global car apart and focus on just an area of it. So let's just do that. Let's just do a couple of those. Let's say um, your sticky point, your sticky area is this transition from flexion, internally rotate, and reach back. And especially that rotational part feels kind of stuck. We can just focus going back and forth on that one area. So the way we do that is you just start here. Whatever your shoulder flexion is, your true shoulder flexion, not cheating with the chest or bending the elbow. And then we would internally rotate here, start to take the arm back and you could pause about here, squeeze out as much internal rotation as you've got, and then externally rotate, come on back up to your shoulder flexion. And again, internally rotate, take the arm down some bit, squeeze out as much rotation there, and then reverse, axial rotation, externally rotate, come back to flexion, let's get one more of those. Internally rotate, reach out to the side, and externally rotate, come back up. 
And you could do these back here, say your sticky point was back here, and then that's where you would work from there. All right, let's spend some time then on the left shoulder, make sure we uh, don't run out of time and, and get the left shoulder. So let's start with those axial rotations. So left arm out to the side, pack the shoulder blade down, elbow stays locked out. Have a look at your left arm, internally rotate, so the bicep should turn down and externally rotate. Internally rotate. Keep crushing the ball or the pair of socks in your hands. Externally rotate. And one last time in this position, internally rotate. Squeeze out that rotation and externally rotate. Okay, so come up more towards shoulder flexion and elbow stays locked out. Arm could be forward, further out to the side than mine. Okay, ribs stay in. Don't flare those ribs. Internally rotate. Don't let the movement happen just at the wrist. Turn the bicep forward. Externally rotate. Again, it's going to be a little bit more limited here than when the arm is out to the side. Internally rotate. Externally rotate. Let's get one more. And externally rotate. Okay, come on back to shoulder extension. Take that left arm back behind you. So arm stays exactly in that same position, then we're just rotating. Internally rotate. Externally rotate, bicep turns up. Internally rotate, squeeze. Squeeze out the rotation. Externally rotate. Fight for a bit more, one more time. Internally rotate. And externally rotate. Okay, let's get that global shoulder far. So come on up, be on your left knee. Uh, right foot forward. Chest stays forward, create a little bit of tension elsewhere in your body. Okay, so we're gonna start with external rotation. Take the arm across the body. Come on up, here's our shoulder flexion point. From here, internally rotate. And try to keep rotating as you go back and down. So I'm always trying to see more rotation. Can I get a little bit more rotation? Okay, and inching with the left hand alongside the hip palm would be facing back and reverse. Imagine the air is thick. Press up through that left arm. Externally rotate. Come on up into shoulder flexion. Cut across the body. Okay, and two more. Sweep across, internally rotate, keep rotating as you go back and down, and reverse. So one thing I've noticed with some, some people is if they're back here and they have trouble externally rotating from there, or even in this part, if they have trouble rotating, often if you take the arm a bit wider to the side, so say I come back here and I'm like, stuck, or my scapula wants to help out. Try taking the arm a little bit wider to the sides. So it's not as tight into the body. You might get a cleaner rotation point, okay? And again, that doesn't, you just want to keep it pain-free. You want to make it doable. <laughs> but if you have trouble back there at that point, that tells you something about your shoulder. Okay, and sweep across. Come on up into shoulder flexion. Okay, internally rotate. Keep rotating as you go back and down. Last half breath here. Press back into shoulder extension, externally rotate. All the way up, cut across, and down. Now let's find, do some sticky point training. So if it is, I'm just gonna pretend like for me, it's this, that, that position there. Maybe for here, for you, it's back here. Okay, so I'm gonna start in shoulder flexion. And no cheating on shoulder flexion. Ribs stay packed in, elbow straight. Internally rotate from here. Just take that arm down any amount. Squeeze out whatever rotation you can get, internal rotation. Then externally rotate, coming back up. And again, internally rotate. Let's come back a bit. We're just practicing this quarter part of the car. Externally rotate, coming back up. One more time. Internally rotate, reach back a bit, squeeze out as much rotation as you can, and externally rotate, come all the way back up. Okay, 
let's lower down. Okay, done with shoulders and scaps and neck for now. Let's just get a little bit of spine to finish up in the last few minutes. So first, um, before we do like some global, um, not global, but some cat cows, just seg segmental stuff, I want you to lay down on your back. Okay, so <laughs> naturally there, have your knees bent. Naturally, of course, there's a little bit of space between your low back and the floor. So I want you to place your hands in that space, or if that's too uncomfortable on your shoulders, you can place like a towel there um, in that space between your low back and the mat. Okay, and from here, we're just going to practice on flexing through the lumbar spine, not segmenting, but I want you to get heavy on your hands or on that towel. And try not to make it a tucking of your pelvis or like, a, like you're kind of bearing down. Just try to flex just through the low back. So there's not a whole lot of pelvis movement. Press down into your hands or that towel and just hold there. So you should feel your low abs working. Okay, and let's just hold that for a few seconds. Trying to smush your hands or the towel. Okay, and then release that pressure. And again, take a breath in, exhale out. Let's try to flatten your low back into your hands or into that towel. Okay, feel those abdominals working. Hold there for a few seconds, trying to maintain that pressure. Okay, and release the pressure. Again, take a breath in, exhale out. To flex the low back into your hands. Again, try not to do a lot of movement in your pelvis or anywhere else. You're just trying to press just the, the low back area into your hands. Keep holding it there. And release. Okay. Take your hands away. So that's just to get a little bit of sensation there. Often our low back is kind of locked here in extension and sometimes controlling a little bit of flexion can be challenging. So let's do some segmental uh, movement just for the lumbar spine to start. So you're gonna come into a tabletop position. Um, wrist hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. From here, come down onto your forearms. So I want you to keep your elbows fairly close to your knees, don't move them way forward. And then you're just gonna interlace your hands and place your head on the ground. It's gonna look like you're going into a headstand, but we're not doing that. So you place your head down and then really round your upper back. So here I've got quite a flat upper back. Really try to, like you're going to do a forward roll. So your upper back should be really rounded, locked into spinal flexion. We're going to try to move just the lumbar spine. So here, max out your lumbar flexion. Okay. Now without changing anything in your thoracic spine in the mid and upper back, Try to slowly come into extension through the low back, through the lumbar spine. Okay, stay rounded in the upper back. Okay, and let's come into flexion through the lumbar spine. If you're not sure whether anything is actually moving or not, you could take one of your hands to the low back area. So as you're in flexion, you should feel some bony structures pointing up. As you start to extend, those should kind of sink away a little bit. Okay. And again, if you can segment here, great. A lot of people, it's just getting anything to move here is a challenge. So let's just go a couple more times. When you come into flexion, really squeeze your low abdominals. Try to round as much as you can for your low back. Okay. And slowly extend. There will be some pelvis movement here, of course. Okay. Let's get one more. Use those low abdominals, flex. Try to get as much flexion, own your flexion there through the low back. And slowly come into extension. And trying to keep the rest of your spine still, just working on lumbar. Okay, let's come on out of that somewhat awkward position, back to a normal tabletop or quadruped position. Let's get the entire spine. Okay, so lock your elbows out. From a neutral spine, let's go into flexion to begin. So you're going to start to tuck your butt under. Use those low abdominals, flexing and rounding through the low back like we just practiced. And then take it further. Move up through the mid-back, upper back, and the neck. Press your hands down and forward a bit here. Really tuck your tail under. Get as much flexion as you can. And stay as you are in the mid and upper back and neck. And then start to tip your pelvis forward. So you're lifting up through your tailbone. Slowly, slowly extend through the low back. How slow can you go? 
and then making your way further up the spine. Okay, once you're in your max uh, spine extension, again, let's reverse. Stay extended in the mid and upper back and the neck. Slowly start to tuck under. Find those low abs to pull you into lumbar flexion. And make your way back to flexion overall. And let's get one more rep here. From flexion, slowly extend. on out of that, just come on down into your back. So you can have your legs outstretched or you can keep your knees up. Just take your hands to your low belly. And as you inhale, kind of expand the breath, blow it down into the lower abdominal. And exhale out, low belly softens. And again, inhale, expand. And exhale out. Take your hands more to the sides of your waist, the sides of your ribs. And as you inhale, and spread laterally. Spread from side to side, and exhale. Sides of the waist draw in slightly, and again, inhale. And exhale out. Take your hands now to the space between your low back and the floor. And again, with your inhalations, just create a little bit of pressure there on the hands and exhale out so that when we're breathing we're expanding the container you think of your your um, abdominal region or your torso as a container trying to expand that evenly 360 degrees around okay, last couple breaths here when you exhale, try to get all the breath out. Okay. Of course, if you can stay and rest longer, please do. Otherwise, it's all 30 minutes goes fast. And there we are. A nice little sip of your coffee or whatever you're on. Thanks very much.